Hi, in this video, I'm going to continue on the topic chemical equilibrium. And in this video, I will first be talking about the reaction quotient. And after that, I will talk about some limitations on the Le Chatelier principle. So let's get started. Now, first of all, reaction quotient is something that measures the relative amount of product and reactant present during a reaction at a particular point in time. Not sure about what it is, right? So how about we look at the expression for reaction quotient. Now let's just say we have a reaction A plus B forming 2C and Q, which is the reaction quotient, is calculated as C squared over A times B and all of these are concentrations. Now does it look very familiar? Yes, it does, because it is basically the same as equilibrium constant, Kc. But the difference is that for Kc, we have EQM at the bottom right corner. Basically, we are talking about the equilibrium concentrations. However, for reaction quotient, it does not necessarily be the equilibrium concentration. It could be any concentration. It could be at time equals to zero. It could be time equals to one minute. It could also be the equilibrium concentration, all right? Now, but why do we have to learn reaction quotient? Now, at the beginning, I said that we have two ways to determine how an equilibrium will change when there is a change acting on the system. Uh, one way is the Le Chatelier principle, we did talk about that. And another one is called reaction quotient. And the difference between the two is that for Le Chatelier principle, it is a qualitative method, so all we can tell is whether the equilibrium will shift to the right or to the left or remain unchanged. But we don't know to what extent of which uh, the equilibrium will change. So it is only qualitative. But for reaction quotient, it is a quantitative method. So we, by calculation, we can tell whether the equilibrium will shift to the right or shift to the left. And we can also know by how much it will shift. Okay. And most importantly, it can be used to solve problem of which the Chatelier principle cannot. So let's have a look here. Reaction quotient can be used to determine the shifting of equilibrium position upon a change. Now this one, both the Chatelier principle and reaction quotient are able to predict. But the second one, to determine whether full reaction or barrel reaction will occur at a greater extent in a non-equilibrium mixture. Now here, this one, Le Chatelier principle is unable to do so. Now here, what we are talking about here is, you can imagine if we are, talk, we are talking about this reversible reaction, and let's just say I have one more of A, one more of B, and two more of C mixed together. Then my question is, well, Will there be a net forward reaction or will there be a net backward reaction at the beginning? No idea, right? Because you may realize that there is no change at all when we simply mix some A, some B, some C together. So this is the situation where the Sutherland principle has no idea what to do. However, by using reaction quotient, we can tell when we have such a combination of chemicals, we are able to know whether there will be a net forward reaction or there will be a net backward reaction okay so this is why we have to learn reaction quotient now down here we are going to perform some calculation involving reaction quotient in order to achieve these two tasks okay let's have a look now let's just say we have this uh, reversible reaction and the case is given and now we have 100 cm cube equilibrium mixture containing the following species. So these are already at equilibrium. So now, when we add 0 0.1 mole of FeNO33 solid into the system, now of course when we add this one in, we are increasing the Fe3 plus concentration from 0 0.1 mole per dm cube to 0 0.2 mole per dm cube. Okay? So there's an increase in Fe3 plus concentration. Now let's just say we use the Chatelier principle. You can tell when Fe3 plus concentration increase, it will shift the equilibrium to the right. Let's see if reaction quotient also predict the same thing. Now you see, 
First of all, we will put down the reaction quotient expression. Okay, QC equals to product concentration over reactant concentration, but we don't have the EQM. Okay, because at the moment we add the iron three nitrate solid, it is not at equilibrium. So therefore, we don't put down EQM here. So once we put down the expression, we sub in those values. We have the uh, concentration 0 0.005 from here, 0 0.5 from here, and this 0 0.2 is the concentration of Fe3 plus after we add the solid. And then we calculate QC, QC equals to 0 0.05, okay? Now you notice that the QC here, when compared to the KC here, okay, QC is smaller than KC, right? When QC is smaller than KC, again, QC is essentially product concentration over reacting concentration, right? So if we register a smaller number, that means it has fewer products and more reactant than what we have at equilibrium, isn't it? So if we have less product and more reactant than what we have at equilibrium, then you will expect to have a net forward reaction, consuming more reactant, generating more product until QC equals to KC. So this is how it works. Okay? When QC is smaller than KC, we have a net forward reaction. Okay? And the equilibrium position will shift to the right. Now, uh, in this situation, we add 0 0.05 moles of Na3PO4, and this solid is able to decrease the concentration of Fe3 plus from 0 0.1 to 0 0.05 because they form a precipitate. So again, we use the same expression. We plug in those numbers this time into 0 0.05. Now, we get the QC equals to 0 0.2. Now, this time, the QC is larger than KC. So QC larger than KC, that means we have more product and less reactant when compared to what we expect to have at an equilibrium mixture. So that's why we will have a net backward reaction. In other words, equilibrium shift to the left until QC equals to KC. Okay, because as you're shifting to the left, you're consuming more product, generating more reactant, and the QC will become smaller and smaller to the point where uh, it strikes 0 0.1. Okay, so this is how it works. So as a quick summary here, when QC is larger than KC, then equilibrium shift to the left. Here, QC is smaller than KC, then it shift to the right. If it happens that QC equals to KC, then there will be no change at all. Now, this number line is very, very useful. So, KC is at the middle. If the QC is larger, larger, so it is on the right-hand side of the number line, so it will always want to shift in a way such that it can become KC. Now, just follow this arrow, you can tell equilibrium position shift to the left. Similarly, if QC is smaller than KC, so it will be on the left of the number line, then KC, then following the arrow, the equilibrium position shift to the right, achieving KC. So that's the idea. So this is how we use QC in order to predict how the equilibrium shifts. Okay? Now, what about the second uh, application when we have a non-equilibrium mixture? Non-equilibrium mixture. Now let's just say again, we use this equation again. This time, we mix these species together and they are at such concentration. Okay? So let's just say we mix together and this is their initial concentration. Now, if they are simply mixed together, do you know whether there is a net forward reaction and net backward reaction? If you use the Chatelier principle, you have no idea because there is no change at all, right? So we need to use QC to help us. Use QC, plug in those uh, non-equilibrium concentrations, we get QC equals to 0 0.12. Comparing the KC, comparing the KC again, so you realize that QC is larger than KC. Remember that slumber line? When QC is on the right-hand side of the KC, the equilibrium will shift to the left. Okay? So since QC is greater than KC, it implies that more product than reactant, so you will expect to have the backward reaction occurring 
uh, is greater, I mean occurring faster than the forward reaction rate. Okay? So that means you will expect to have a net backward reaction. So again, when QC is greater than KC, that will, the backward reaction will occur faster. Okay? Now you notice that, you notice that uh, here on the previous page, here we are predicting the change at equilibrium position. So we will say uh, shift to the left, shift to the right, no change. Because here we are having an equilibrium mixture at the first place and then we add something into it so there is a change in equilibrium position. So that's why we will describe it this way. However, here we don't have an equilibrium mixture to start with. We start with a non-equilibrium mixture. So that's why in my description here, I will say that the forward reaction proceeds faster. The backward reaction proceeds faster, something like that. So pay attention to how you express your idea. If you say that, ah, therefore, uh, equilibrium shifts to the left. It's quite weird because we, we don't have an equilibrium mixture. How come the equilibrium position will shift? All right? So do pay attention to how you uh, express the ideas. Okay, we have two practice questions. You can pause the video and attempt it yourself and then resume the video and check the answers. Okay, let's have a look. We have a equilibrium mixture. Okay, concentration of each chemical species is 0 0.1 mole per dm cube and the total volume is 100 cm cube. Calculate the Kc of the reversible reaction. Now Kc equals to C eqm square d eqm over a eqm b eqm right and they say that all the chemical species are 0 0.1 mole per dm cube so basically 0 0.1 cube over 0 0.1 square so basically equals to 0 0.1 right is it yep okay 0 0.1 mole per dm cube Okay, this is Kc. Now down here, explain with reference to the reaction quotient without calculation how the equilibrium position changes when we add this quantity of B into the mixture. Okay, when we add 0 0.1 mole of B to the mixture, so of course it will shift to the right. We use the shorter principle, we can tell. But here, we want to make use of the reaction quotient without calculation. So how do we explain it? Well, it's not too difficult. You can say that the concentration of B will definitely increase, right? So QC equals to C square, uh, sorry, C square D over A and B, right? So therefore, when B increases, QC okay, decreases. And when QC is smaller than KC, okay, the equilibrium position will shift to right until QC equals to KC okay so that's the idea okay now C with reference to the reaction quotient with calculation how the equilibrium changes when we add 100 cm cube of distilled water into the mixture now we add 100 cm cube distilled water to the mixture. First of all, what is the change? What will be the change? So when we add distilled water, basically you are diluting all the chemical species. So originally 100 cm cube, when you add equal volume of distilled water inside, so all the chemical species will become 0 0.05 mole per dm cube, right? So QC equals to again C square over D divided by A times B. So now it becomes what? It becomes 0 0.05 to the power 3 divided by 0 0.05 squared. So this is equal to 0 0.05 mole per dm cube. Okay? So since QC is smaller than KC, right? Therefore, the equilibrium position will shift to right 
Okay? And shift to the right. So that's the idea. Actually, the shorter principle can also predict the same thing. Because in the shorter principle, upon a dilution, we will say that uh, when it is diluted, the total solute concentration decreases. So you want to shift to the side with more number of solutes so that you can increase the total solute concentration. Okay? Or another way of saying is that we say that uh, the decrease in product concentration is more significant than the decrease in reactant concentration. Therefore, the equilibrium position will shift to the right. Now question two here. So we have a reversible reaction as shown below. Kc is given. Now a mixture is prepared by adding this quantity of this, so 0 0.4 here, uh, 0 0.8 here, and also 0 0.06 here in a 5 dn cube closed container. Okay? So these are modes. Now calculate the reaction quotient at the beginning when the chemical are mixed. Okay? So Q equals to SO2, CO2, SO2, CL2. Okay? So you just sub in all those things. So SO2 is uh, 0 0.8 divided by 5. CL2 is 0 0.06 divided by 5. Here, 0 0.4 divided by 5. Okay? get 0 0.024 mole per dm cube. Okay. All right, briefly explain whether a net forward reaction or a back net backward reaction will take place. So since QC is smaller than KC, therefore there will be a net forward reaction. Okay. So that's the idea. All right, so the last item is talking about the limitation of the Chatterley principle. Actually, I did talk about a bit when I talk about reaction quotient because knowing the limitation of the Chatterley principle makes it important to learn reaction quotient. Okay? Now, I would say the Chatterley principle is a very convenient tool, uh, but in some situations, the Chatterley principle fails uh, to predict. So let's have a look. Now, LCP fails to predict when there are two or more contradicting changes occurring simultaneously. Now, very simple. If I have, like, for example, A plus B forming C, okay? And, I mean, this is a reversible reaction, and the delta H is negative, okay? So you think about it. What if I increase the temperature, and at the same time, I add some A into it? Now, you know, increase the temperature will shift the equilibrium to the left, because the forward is exothermic, the backward is endothermic. Increasing temperature, it will shift to the left. But at the same time, I add some A. When, you, when I add some A into the system, then the equilibrium will shift to the right. In this situation, you have no idea how the equilibrium position will shift. Okay? Now, the second one is that when the equilibrium system involving gaseous mixture, now actually the shutter principle fails in gaseous system. I will explain to you using the example down here. Okay? And also the number of moles of gas are not equal on both sides of the chemical equation. The number two and number three are right, uh, actually talking about similar things. Okay? Now let's have a look. Again, this is the Haber process. N2 reacts with H2 to form NH3. Now let's just say uh, we have an equilibrium mixture in a rigid sealed syringe with a movable piston, okay? And inside we have we have N2, H2, and NH3 at equilibrium. Now, let's just say we suddenly inject a small amount of N2 into the syringe. So, I don't know, maybe you have a narrower syringe that puncture through this um, uh, uh, plasticine stuck and then you inject some N2 inside. When you inject some N2 inside, what would, they, what would that be? When we add N2, then... Of course, the piston will move backwards, right? The piston will move backwards because the N2 occupies some volume, okay? So, in this case, 
you will have N2, H2, and NH3, right? Okay? And these changes will not only lead to an increase in concentration of N2, but at the same time, it leads to a decrease in concentration of H2 and NH3. So this one increase, this one decrease, this one decrease. Okay? So if you look at it one by one, if the concentration of N2 increases, of course it will shift to the right. However, when the concentration of H2 decreases, it will shift back to the left. Now at the same time, when ammonia concentration decreases due to the increase in volume, the equilibrium shifts to the right. So there are two, there are altogether three changes, and two of the changes will predict that it will shift to the right. One of the change changes will shift to the left. So what would be the ultimate outcome? Well, according to the shutter principle, we can't predict. We can't say two wins by one. Okay? So for the shutter principle, it fails to predict. Okay? But reaction quotient can help to solve the problem. Now, this is a reaction quotient expression and concentration is number of mole over volume, isn't it? So we can express it in this way and rearranging the term, we, we get this one, okay? Now knowing that the number of mole of ammonia and H2 remain unchanged, right? So the volume of which we can measure, number of mole of N2, of course we know because we know how much N2 is added into it, then we can simply perform some calculation. We want to perform calculation to find out this term, this va the value of this term. So if V2 over N, number of mole of N2 here, if this one is larger than 1, okay, then the Q will become a larger value, it will be larger than Kc, then it will shift to the left, it will shift to the left. If this is smaller than 1, that means Q, that this term, if it is smaller than 1, that makes the Q smaller than Kc, therefore it will shift to the right. If it happens that this term equals to 1, then Q equals to Kc. Okay, so it doesn't change at all. Okay, so this is how reaction quotient is able to solve problems of which the shutter principle cannot. Okay, so that's the idea. And that's it for this video. And that's it also the end of the topic chemical equilibrium.